We'll start off with this prayer. I wrote it some weeks ago when I wasn't feeling on top of the world, I think. So bear with me. Because you might see something or hear something that you're familiar with as well. Lord God Almighty, why do you turn your face from me? Why do you allow my mind to be filled with doubt and my soul to sink into the dismal pond of uncertainty and fear? Not for me the steadfast emotion of joy, not for me the certain knowledge I'm doing your will, not for me the courage to know I'm speaking your words, conveying your message of love and peace. I know you are a loving God. I know that you are a forgiving God. I know you treat everyone with the same availability to know you and have a relationship with you, a close and deep spiritual one. Do I expect too much? Is it the jealousy I feel against others when I see their closeness to you? which is a hindrance? Is it the lack of being still and spending time with you and you alone? Is it my lack of discipline in my study of your word? What do I need to do to feel I'm resting in your loving arms? To know deep, deep, deep within me that you really are in control of my life. I feel so alone despite those around me, despite the love and compassion, companionship of my husband and my friends. The joy of meeting with the church fellowship seems to have diminished. Is it since COVID? Since there's been a lack of leadership, is it that I've not grieved properly, properly the loss of family and friends? How do we get the people in our churches to grow in faith and commitment to telling others of the good news of Jesus Christ and your love and forgiveness and reconciliation when I myself as a leader and elder am in this place of doubt, fear and despair? You, Lord God, as Holy Spirit are the answer. Surely without that outpouring within my life, my whole being, your will cannot be done. Lord, Lord, hear my prayer. Come and dwell afresh in me. Show me the way to go. Lead me in these uncertain times that I may help bring your people into the fold to serve you in spreading the news and to be an instrumental part in bringing the kingdom of heaven to Hetmond Wyke and into space. My memory, Lord, is failing me more than ever. Let me never forget your gifts of creation, of your love and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Help me to discern what is my role in life at this time and within the community, in and around our home and our church and in my family and the family of man. Hear, O oh God, I beseech you. Amen. I'm not sure how long ago I wrote that. I, I actually found it in a book and... Uh, and I've, I've been feeling a bit like that just recently. Um, but I think it was because I was missing David as well, since he'd been in hospital. Anyway, I'll, I'll uh, use this prayer, which is from uh, Nick Fawcett, How to Pray. So let us pray. It's entitled Amazing Grace. Lord, I come to worship, not because I should, 
Not to claim I'm worthy, virtuous or good. Not because I'm special, different to the crowd, having any merit, reason to be proud. Rather, I come humbly, conscious of my need, knowing I've been faithless, false in word and deed. Day by day I stumble, miss the goals I seek, though I mean to serve you inwardly, I'm weak. Lord, I can't deceive you, hide what's deep inside, yet you bid me welcome, arms extended wide. Gratefully I worship, coming not in fear, but responding gladly, thankful to be here. I will try to follow, walk the Christian way, not because I have to, but because I may. Amen. And that's what it boils down to, really. Although, although we can feel down many a time, and sometimes we look at people and we think, well, those people look at us and sometimes we, sometimes we look at other people and we think, well, they're full of it and they seem to have the right answers. And then when you're feeling down, it makes you feel worse. But we've got strength. We can rise again. And I'll read this prayer as well. Well, this is a scripture that we need to lean on. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust in him with all my heart and so I'm sustained. My heart sings for joy within me as I give him thanks. Psalm 28 verse 7. And in Hebrews 13 6, it says, come what may, we can confidently say the Lord is my helper I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Let us pray. Lord, you don't promise us comfort and wealth, freedom from sickness, immaculate health. Faith brings no pledge of exemption from pain, troubles oppress us again and again. Tragedies cause us to grieve and despair. Sometimes their burden too painful to bear. Visions are shattered and hopes turn to dust. Prayer seems in vain, though we try still to trust. Yet through such trial, though such trials turn out to be true, still I believe you will help me get through. There by my side when I can't carry on, Offering strength when all other has gone. Even in sorrow, you somehow bring joy. Peace that no trials can ever destroy. Light in the darkness continues to shine. Turning the water of life into wine. Let us just pause for a moment and think of that. And then there's a meditation or a meditative prayer that thinks, if you imagine a sea wall holding back the wind and the waves, and God is there to defend us in much the same way. It had taken a pounding day after day, year after year. The mighty sea relentless renewing its attack as wave after wave hurled itself against the wall and exploded in a cloud of spray. Yet, still it stood, solid and defiant, a massive bulwark guarding the town beyond. Thank you, Lord, for guarding me, faithfully providing shelter and protection when storms brew and waves threatened to sweep me away. Thank you for the strength of your love and certainty of your promise. The knowledge that though all else may pass away, your goodness will continue solid and secure in an ever-changing universe. Whatever I face, I will not fear, for you are with me. 
the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And then a prayer of St. Augustine of Hippo. O oh God, who so cares for every one of us, as if you cared for each one alone, and so for all, as if all were but as one, you are the life of our lives. You are the constant through all change. Blessed are all who love you. Amen. And then, for many ways, for the many ways you've been with us across the years, equipping, enabling, supporting, sustaining, living Lord, receive our thanks. For the knowledge that you're with us now, ready to strengthen in times of crises, guide in times of uncertainty, hold in times of sorrow, and provide in times of challenge. Living Lord, receive our thanks. Redeeming, restoring, living Lord, receive our thanks. Amen. And now I'd like to finish off with the words of this hymn. The day thou gave us, Lord, is ended. The darkness falls at thy behest. To thee our morning hymns ascended. Thy praise shall hallow now our rest. We thank thee that thy church and sleeping while earth rolls onward into light. Through all the world her watch is keeping and rests not now by day or night. As o'er each continent and island the dawn leads on another day. The voice of prayer is never silent, nor dies the strain of praise away. The sun that bids us rest is waking, our brethren, neath the western sky, and hour by hour fresh lips are making thy wondrous doings heard on high. So be it, Lord, thy throne shall never, like earth's proud empires, pass away, but stand and rule and grow forever, till all thy creatures own thy sway. And that, the verse that I like best in that hymn is the sun that bids us rest is waking our brethren neath the western skies, and hour by hour fresh lips are making thy wondrous doings heard on high. Even if we're not praying, somebody else in the world is. And I think that's important for us to know. And um, God is there, and I know that. It's just that we don't always feel it. And I think that's the thing that we forget sometimes. Thank you.